Hello, and welcome to Cinema Craptaculous, where we say a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one. Just a lot easier to make fun of. This is Stephanie, and with me are my uncrappy co-hosts... Dave! And John! And today, TV writer and avid office nerf basketball player Ty Freer is back! Hey, guys! Hi! Hey, Ty! Hey! Now it's time for 100 Questions with Ty Freer. Don't worry, this will only take two hours. Um, no, you you were with us for, what was it? Not Justice League, uh, Suicide Squad. I think, oh, you're right, it was Suicide Squad. I thought it was Justice League. They're all the same to me. They uh, are all Yeah, same. that, and then, and then the Meg. The Meg most recently, but I think that was like three years ago now, like 2019. Yeah, oh my God, like yeah, that's when century. movie theaters were still showing movies. I mm-hmm. think Suicide yeah. Squad, we were in person, too. If that's not yes. uh, right. Yeah. Remember? We yeah. were in person for the Meg, weren't we? For the Meg yeah. also. Yeah. But we yeah. were not in person when we did our episode of Terror Tunnel Tie. When we were, well, that's a lot of teas. <laughs> Terror <laughs> Tunnel Tie. <laughs> Terror Tunnel Tie. We did the boat. We did the boat. Uh, How many years ago was that? Was that like right into pandemic or was that I like think, a year into pandemic? I think it was 2020. I think. Okay. Wow. I cannot remember. Right the now, point yeah. is, I'm due. I was due to come back. I'm very hurt. It took two years to get an invite, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I get it. But we ran out of other guests, so we had to go through our old <laughs> Rolodex, dust that thing off, and go. Is there somebody named uh, Ty? Ty? Or is it Thank no. You? Is that what this says? T Y. <laughs> yeah. I think we meant. It was T-I. this guy. Yeah, our most poorly reviewed, worst downloaded episodes. Can we bring that guy back? Yeah, he's a real. He's a real. He's a real Jim. America needs to hear him. I'm just bummed that since it's been so long since I've seen you that you don't look like Tom Hanks from Castaway. I was expecting like, you know, you it's been all these years, your hair is all long and big beard. Yeah, I cleaned up just for you. I'm sorry for ruining uh ruining your your uh your shot of me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this this is a movie that you brought to us, Ty. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm so I cannot wait for this talk. I really can't. This yeah. is this is the the type of bad movie that hits every cylinder to me. And my first thought was like, oh my god, what does Stephanie think? I really hope Stephanie's seen it. If she <laughs> yes. hasn't, normally we send our vitriol. This will push today, her into it. This will be you. We blame. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I, I I genuinely can't wait. Yeah. Well, for <laughs> me, I love. There are certain types of bad movies I love. And already by calling it a bad movie, I've spoiled my own review. But uh, I love a movie that's been on the shelf for like multiple years. I love a movie that's release date has been pushed back multiple times. Uh, and I love and I love like a sex thriller, even though in hindsight, I haven't seen any. <laughs> You just like the concept of one. I like the concept of a sex thriller. You know, like there are the classics when, you know, I was uh, I was a kid. You know, there was what? Basic Instinct and Fatal Attraction. Did you, uh, did you sneak into these uh, films or uh, were they late night on, on HBO and you snuck? <laughs> I was I was too young to have like seen them in the theater or anything, obviously. Uh, but when uh, I also w- was from rural Indiana growing up, so I didn't get cable, I didn't get satellite until I was like thirteen. So by that point, I had moved away from like really being into a sex thriller and more jumping into like you know stuff that airs on like Cinemax to at like one a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a like a step past the set. Well, if you want to call it that, sure. Uh, uh, which is a step past the sex thriller. So, point is, and, uh, it just occurred to me, indecent, indecent proposals, another one of these. I haven't seen any of them. Uh, so maybe this was. I just know the names, and this was maybe just a uh, you know uh, a heightening of this experience. Like it was wrapping all those classics into this one really terrible package. So Ty could probably do like a whole CC episode himself, just reviewing old Shannon. And tweed uh, Andrew Robinson films from, from Cinemax. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, man. If you want to do like a like a sub a sub podcast, uh, a software sub podcast, I'm in. Just tell me, no, tell me. Yeah, sorry, the, Andrew Stevens. Erotica Craptaculous. I think it was Andrew Stevens. <laughs> Wasn't he the guy that did all those films with Shannon Tweed? And why do you know this, John? Well, because in the '90s, they were like, if you'd go to Blockbuster, there was a whole shelf of those sort of soft core. They'd probably what aired. I didn't have cable, but they probably what aired on Cinemax. But or but they were or they were showtime late night after hours. But all those uh, key art you'd see on the shelves, they were all horrible. It was like the same like photo of Shannon Tweed just on different bodies. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a, like a hint of lingerie or something, a hint of lingerie and like a full moon or something like that. <laughs> 
Very yeah, cool it looks slightly vampiric or, or werewolfy. But yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> like this is magic. <laughs> well, this movie has Ben Affleck is obsessed with snails and the boyfriends of his flirtatious wife in this Hulu original erotic thriller, Deep Water. Here's the rapid recap to catch you up. Rapid recap. Retired and super rich robotics engineer Vic, Ben Affleck, spends his days watching his promiscuous sexy wife, trademark, Melinda, Ana de Armas, befriend boys as he sulks about, takes exhausting rides on his bicycle, passive aggressively bonds with their small daughter, Trixie, and aggressively aggressively annoys Melinda. They are rich people with rich people problems, like whose house to get drunk at this evening. It appears that they have an open marriage and no jobs, <laughs> but when every boyfriend Melinda picks up ends up dead, uh, is it an awful coincidence or awful Vic? And will this mystery drag them all into, wait for it, deep water? Yes. Work the title in there. <laughs> Good job. I, I, I want to rewrite a little bit. Is it is he is Vic a victim or is Vic vicious? Ooh. Ooh. I think he is a victim of his viciousness. I think he's a victim of <laughs> needs needs to work after divorcing Jennifer Garner. <laughs> I think he's a victim of not having enough caffeine. Oh, wait, no. He was, like, putting Dunkin' Donuts through their fourth quarter. By, like, <laughs> so many iced coffees. Uh, I, I didn't realize uh, Ben Affleck was so big. They oh. they really kind of... And, and I don't mean like, fat. He's like I, a I mean Sasquatch just, in every shot. He's huge. But it's like he... But that one scene where he comes home on his bicycle and, like... <laughs> Wait, that's every scene. Well, that one scene, <laughs> one scene in particular when he comes home on his bicycle and Ana de Armas is like looking at him and they have that weird ass exchange. Like, what are you looking at? Nothing. Or like, what? Nothing. You know, whatever. He's wearing the teeniest bike shorts and he has such a big upper body and little skinny legs. Like, it's really like, I mean, I mean, it's not just like the calves. It's like everything from the waist down is very slim, but everything above that is like big and his head is huge. If he was all red, yeah. he'd be the monster from the Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> that that his shirt his shirt never comes off, right? He never pops that thing off throughout. Except in the pool. Oh, you're right in the pool. But we don't get like a great shot of that bod in the pool, right? It's like water covering. Am I wrong? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, there was one, there, but but there was one shot that is debated whether or not it was CGI'd or a stand-in because it looked like he didn't have that. You know what I'm talking about, and I I know what you're talking about. They did not have that awesome heavy metal Phoenix tattoo anywhere on screen. So, <laughs> oh, on the back. And when back I shot. say, yeah, 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 woo, that thing is a smoke show. I just love that giant phoenix. <laughs> No, I, I can't. I'm sorry, guys. I, I just, uh, I can't lie anymore. Um, yeah, like, th I think they said that that was CGI'd out. Because in the pool scene, he's sitting there it, going like, huh, yeah. he's sulking in the water this time. He's okay, yeah, that yeah, that that didn't occur to me. I didn't think about the tattoo in the back, on the back in the pool. I kept thinking like, oh, you know, there were several sex scenes. And at some point, he's going to pop off that shirt. And then we're going to get the tattoo. And then I'm going to laugh. And that never, that never happened. <laughs> Wasn't so, th so this film is like another one of those films that um, I just assume is Atlanta. Apparently it's Louisiana. And yeah. everybody is very well off in this movie, it seems like. Yeah, they um, live in massive museums. massive houses, these, these kitchens that are bigger than anything I've ever lived in. And they, it, it, they... It's like that Fitzgerald book. Um... <laughs> the Great, the great <laughs> Gatsby? No, uh, the, the, the Big Gatsby. Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that Fitzgerald book. <laughs> great Gatsby with sex and murder. Wait, Wait but that is, the great Gatsby that is <laughs> that is the Great Gatsby. Okay, it's that. like the porn version of the Great Gatsby. Are you saying Gatsby? Like I am. <laughs> well, this movie was the great. Please gas me because uh, I just wanted to gas to sleep. About t I stuck with it though, and I'm glad I did. Here's the thing: I watched this film on my own accord. How embarrassing is that? I had no completely wow. preemptive of oh, Ty's wow. suggestion to the group. Just was curious, and uh, you know, Anna de Armas. She was in the Bond movie, and she's uh, right. uh, she's you know promising and not hard on the eyes. And Ben Affleck is you know he's Ben Affleck. He's Batman. Yeah. Uh, I just was hoping to get, well, Adrian Lyne, you know, or Lynn, you know, he did Fatal Attraction and what was the one with uh, Un Richard Unfaithful. Gere? 
Yeah, and he's, you know, he's just kind yeah. of known for sort of that pushing the boundaries of marital, you know, challenges, which is what married people really need to watch. And <laughs> I just, I needed caffeine. It just, I was, it was like, oh, you needed like a, a f- you, you needed a quick ride on your bicycle to wake up. Well, you just watch, <laughs> you just can't, I, we can get into Ben Affleck's performance, but you can't just play dour and make it interesting. And I felt like no. the, a lot of this was started out very dour. And then the energy was in Anna de Armas, but it was, it was, uh, because she's allowed to have these boyfriends who we never really get to know because, well, you know, they disappear. Yeah, well, let's see. There was there was the the blonde baby face one at the beginning. This is where I texted you guys and said, "What the fuck is this?" Because I don't know what's going on. It was here. like Thor, it was like Chris Hemsworth and Brad Pitt had a baby. That's who that, that guy was. Yeah. An it, it, that wasn't that great looking. No. No, I agree. He was not a hot lady. guy. Like I turned to Kim and I was like, is this guy hot? Because I think he's meant to be hot. And then she didn't say anything. So I think she thought he was hot. <laughs> so I think she we're, we're wrong on that she one. She pled the fifth. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So there was that guy, and then there was uh, uh, Jacob Ellerty, who was like really tall piano man, right? Yeah. And yeah. then there yeah. was uh, uh, was it Finn R- Finn Whitrock, who was um, Brazil guy, or like? Hey, the, hold on, hold on. Tech I want to change my name to Finn Whitrock. I feel like yeah, I'd be that's far more successful in life. If I my think that, name isn't that, isn't that an adult uh, film name? Yeah, I saw that on Cinemax when I was 13. Yeah. <laughs> Finn Whitrock is. It was good. It was good, yeah. Moonlight Shadows. <laughs> or he's the other neighbor to the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the, the name of. Oh, God, I can't remember. Uh, uh, never mind. I can't I'm, remember. I'm sure what it was her a stone is. pun, though. Yes, it definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Mark Rock. That's what I was going to say. And In Mark Rock. Rock. Twitch, Twitch. <laughs> so are we going to talk about the plot of this movie? Was there one? Because it seemed no. like it, it seemed like it was it was Ben. It was a character study of Ben Affleck, but we never really got any insight into who or why he was because he is playing the role of did he or didn't he the entire time, apparently. But, right? but for things we don't care about, because we only see two murders and then like one murder is spoken about off screen or, you know, spoken yeah. about and apparently happened off screen before the movie even started. And then blonde kid, the blonde well, and, baby and, man. And so apparently they have yeah. this open relationship where the younger b- wife um, who just wants to have friends, particularly male friends, is allowed to, quote, they have this relationship, but he's jealous. And it's, it never made sense. Like, if you are okay no. with this, how do you have the right to be well, jealous? The one but, thing I want to kind of know is what is the lead up to this? Because her the affair that takes place off screen and the murder that takes place off screen was either a month or a year ago. I think it was like a month ago. So <laughs> within this movie, there's like two murders that take place over the course of what, a summer, a year, a week? I have no idea. Right. Um, and so it seems like they have this understanding, but don't have the understanding. Who, because, who decided? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just, but, you know, it, it got to a point where his friends were starting to say, look, you got to put a stop to this because she's just kind of like making a fool she's of you. Mean, sexy party wife. That's what I texted you. I was like, this yes. is mean, sexy party wife, the movie. And like, I don't understand. I totally agree with you, Dave. Like, what what, what was the tipping point here? If she yes. apparently was like, you know, having relationships outside of their marriage at, with his permission, if this was an open marriage, why in the world were his friends suddenly like, you got to stop. This isn't good. Like, what? why yeah. is it now? Why now? Is it because dude off screen disappeared? Maybe. Or maybe it, it seems to me like as it progressed, she was getting more and more aggressively open about it like uh like with the <laughs> blonde dude it was like oh we're just kind of friends and then he sees her making out with him in public right like um, at the party and, and i was and, like did everybody already know that was going to happen because everybody seemed pretty yeah. chill about it <laughs> they, they right and she's not being secretive chill. about it she's not being discreet at all no <laughs> as so soon like, as he walks this... in she's like hey get over here let's kiss in the yeah. corner <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an incredible Anna de Armas impression, by the way. I know for a second you thought, wait, did Ty leave and did she come in? <laughs> what happened to Ty, you bitch? No. <laughs> well, what, the thing is, is, okay, my thing as as the sole representative of straight ladies here on the podcast, 
<laughs> I mean, ladies who date ladies who date men. I don't understand. Okay, here's what I do understand. I do understand that someone like Melinda, who looks like Ana de Armas, would have you know a, a, a menagerie of men to choose from. Like it was like a yeah. new dude every weekend. And I was like, how is she meeting these people? Is she just like on grind? I mean, on Tinder, or is she like you know? trying yeah. to because look up all, old boyfriends they they were all kind of like musicians weren't they wasn't the first the blonde guy musician mm-hmm. and then the piano guy she's like oh i'm getting lessons with him and then she's a natural uh, <laughs> and then, that's from saying that it was stupid that's right <laughs> and then the last guy the, the the senator was an old boyfriend or as she phrased it the first american she fucked when she got over there and it was like, could you not? Like, I mean, that was just something I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, what? Like, is she is she acting out or is she like, like, I just want you to love me? Or is she like, I mean, first of all, why can they get a divorce? I don't know. And I actually we're kind of blowing over the daughter aspect of this, too. They have a six year old daughter who's That's in the it. middle of all this. And she sounds like first- a 1940s pinup. I know. Tr- Trixie, Trixie is, is, is not yeah. a name you give a girl unless you, you want her to wear patent leather shoes and not much else. It, uh, <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Tr- Trixie, Trixie is, is like one of those old pinup names. I just said that. That's, that's <laughs> I, 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 yeah. okay, I qualified John, it. Is, it. is it bedtime over there? Do you need to get some more milk? Know, do you not know? Okay, we're going to pull out uh, pinup girls from the 1940s. I um, just said <laughs> okay what were you saying sorry we'll just we'll just put old man john to bed and then we'll continue with our show hey craptaculars we'll be right back and now back to the show when it started i thought the daughter was the daughter of a first marriage not not the current wife's daughter so when they flash back to like oh here's the pictures on the rocks i was pregnant then i was a little i was shocked because yeah. and, and it was because the relationship between the three of them felt like uh ben and trixie were super close and father and daughter and anna what, what's her melinda was a just you know a new Se- mean sexy party wife and not mean a mean sexy mm-hmm. party wife yeah not a mom and not even like interested in the daughter the first scene they have together she's yelling at her to turn off the old mcdonald's song yeah which is also funny to me because like uh when you were a kid do you actually enjoy the song old mcdonald had a farm or was it just a song that was around because you were a kid (laughs) when you're a kid you're taught like six songs like if i had when i was a kid if i had the ability to have a third party device play a song for me. Like the last song I'm playing is Old MacDonald Had a Farm. <laughs> exactly. And and kids outgrow that at like age three. This girl's six years old right. she's, and she's singing Old MacDonald. I mean, I thought maybe she was special. Um, you but, know, yeah. And she was. I thought she may have been a genius and oh. she was doing it intentionally to mess with the mother. And like halfway through the movie, I, like I was trying to second guess the movie the whole time, which was a mistake because the movie's pretty much like, you know, Freud's statement uh, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Well, this is like sometimes a dick is just a dick. And uh, throughout the whole movie, I'm like, oh, maybe the wife is actually killing these guys. Oh, Oh, maybe it's Trixie is killing these guys because she <laughs> doesn't want the family. We're, we're talking to about the central mystery of this film, if there is one. And the the mystery is is not is a what happened to the guy because they never found the, the the first boyfriend who's talked about off screen. They and did. we're introduced. We're introduced. They found him in the course of the film, but in the start of the film, he's mysteriously gone. And Affleck's character jokes to the blonde friend, uh, "Hey, I uh, I killed him." And just want to let you know that that's what I, you know, I killed him. And the guy, of course, blabs. And then it gets back to Ben. And Ben's like, I was just kidding, guys. I was just kidding. And the whole town is like a bunch of rich gossips. And then we're so we're thinking, OK, now we're getting into an area of is it's like Jeff Bridges from what was that movie? The uh, Jagged Edge or, you know, where is he really the killer or is he or is she or is Trixie? And then we don't really get any <laughs> character development other than the fact that he's into snails and she likes to have sex with other men. That's the extent of the <laughs> That was of the characters. extent of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was really into those snails too. Like it was just awkward. Okay, let me ask you this. With the snails, I was searching the whole time for some kind of thematic <laughs> like reason for the snail. Like maybe they have many partners or, or, or the females have many partners and the males only 
have uh, one partner, or maybe they love for life, or maybe it's just always a slimy orgy with the snails. <laughs> Is there anything with snails that thematically makes them fit within this movie of why he's obsessed with these fucking snails? Well, didn't he bring Piano Guy or, or one of the boyfriends into Brazil guy. his snail den? Yeah. And, and, and yeah. I think there was a little little bit of dialogue where he says you know that they how they mate or something and and there was i think they if we went back there probably was something i, I forgot it because it was superfluous well, well he didn't i, I don't I, think no. he talked about the he didn't talk about the mating he talked about how like if you you have to starve them to eat them yeah and but but i know snails aren't they supposed Otherwise, to be like aphrodisiacs isn't escargot an aphrodisiac no Maybe oysters. I don't know. Well, Maybe he said they that they're poisonous oysters. if you eat them. If you eat them raw, they're poisonous. And and I thought that was foreshadowing. Like, oh, someone. <laughs> yeah, it was certainly it certainly plugs. felt like setup, but never <laughs> never came back. I know. I was like, oh, they're gonna yeah. poison somebody. Oh, guess not. Yeah. I was like, that's how Trixie kills them all. Can we talk about the townspeople? Because we're introduced to, I mean, it made me realize that I'm clearly hanging out with my friends wrong. Because these couples get together and they get, they're walking, they're doing these little uh, field games, not, you know, potato yes! sack races, it's but like they like, don't games. spill, don't spill the gin, Ricky. And there are these amazing houses and they're all so close. And uh, Beautiful we're introduced, people. Right. We're introduced to one uh, older husband who has a younger wife kind of like a reverse played by tracy letts and uh he what? apparently has this this suspicion he's a mystery writer and he thinks his latest book is going to be finding out that he suspects all along that Vic, uh ben affleck's character is a murderer and he doesn't have proof and his wife is very annoyed with the even the quiff of accusations and they kind of lead us on that perhaps <laughs> maybe ben affleck and the, his wife might get together um what? But Tracy Letts' character kind yeah, of becomes a I bit agree. of a, a linchpin later on. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I understand what you meant, like that they were going to get together because they were confidant. Like they danced yeah. and then like well, she was on calling his it side. dancing is generous. <laughs> <laughs> They yeah, that's another music. weird. Yeah, there's a, this weird bit where Affleck doesn't dance yet. The entirety of their friend group does constantly. It's the most <laughs> dancing I've ever seen in a movie in my life. It's so <laughs> yes. funny. That's right. And I like, go, oh, Affleck it. doesn't dance. <laughs> Yeah. Your, your extras, text you was something like, yeah, extras got to dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they set him up as, as never being a dance guy. And then there's like, I don't know, fourth, fifth party. And uh, Tracy Letts' <laughs> wife is standing there, Affleck. And Affleck, do you want to dance? And the whole town can't believe that Ben's about to dance. Oh, my God. What a what an event we're about to see. <laughs> and right. literally, it's just him putting his arms around this woman and spinning her. Just spinning. <laughs> just spinning in a circle. For like 90 seconds. And again, the town is, it's on its feet. They can't believe what they're witnessing. <laughs> and, and, and the thing, he like dips just, just a bit. And, and little uh, Rel, the little Rel I love. In the Sasquatch kingdom, the Sasquatches don't really dance. So they were witnessing something pretty historic. To see a Sasquatch yeah. get on the dance floor <laughs> with a human and dance. Yeah, I, I guess you wanna... take what you can get. You you brought up uh, Lil Rao, Lil Rao Lil Howie, yeah. yeah. Um, who I really enjoy, and I was like, oh, this is a bonus that he's in the movie. But this movie, it's really weird because at that point where the author attacks him, um, oh, I guess it's when the when the piano boyfriend drowns in the pool. It's about the halfway point, and all their friends are gone. Like it's like no longer about that. It's now about this murder mystery, and it just just kind of gave me whiplash because it was just this transition from kind of like a I really thought a fun I was enjoying the aspect of Ben Affleck being this threatening dick who actually wasn't a murderer and then all of a sudden it became oh no he's a murderer yeah in the and, end. and all the fun <laughs> is done yep we've solved how the mystery he, of the film let's let's end it how did he drown the piano man very uh, forcefully he, yeah yeah do you, he, well, he do you mean like, like how how were they alone like why would they be alone in the pool because that's a thought and I nobody had. saw why? them at all in those that house with like window to window walls like every just <laughs> 30, there were like 27 people like in the <laughs> <laughs> but hey, guys, it was the... raining it was raining everybody knows it, it, rain obscures all vision okay yeah <laughs> well here's my I question i can only see two feet my question well maybe i should ask that question later but i'll i'll start now okay. they're in louisiana right yes what part 
because it seems like this pool wasn't covered. You know, there are alligators <laughs> and it actually comes up again later. Cause I'm like, when he take, when he takes his little jaunt out into the woods to commit his next murder, which we'll talk about in a second, no alligators, no reptiles, yes, no, you right. know, like I was like, this is dangerous. And he's just like standing around and like what waste high water. And I'm like, you were going to get bitten. Get ready for that death roll. Cause it's <laughs> yeah, <coming."> exactly. <laughs> like alligators never figure as a part of this at all. Well, was it Louisiana where they shot it? Cause it sure looked an awful lot like Georgia. I uh, thought like it was everything Portland. Else now. Because yeah, was, it was Louisiana. I saw the, the credits at the end. Yeah. Maybe it's northern Louisiana, Stephanie, and the, the alligator counts lower. But they tried to make it look like, oh, this is this looks almost French quartery, you know, like like some yeah. of the exteriors like look very, very much like, oh yeah, this is like the big easy, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> no, where we are? Where are we? And maybe you guys have more experience, uh, you know, being in the South for whatever reason, but I, I just was looking at those night scenes, like how are they not all just being eaten by mosquitoes? Good they're point. in the pool, yeah. they're walking around in their little shorts and bikinis and all I can think of is malaria. They were Here's what I think. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think if you have the money that this group of friends does, you don't have to worry about gators. You don't have to worry about mosquitoes. They have this sonic about fences. Class, they it's very it smart. Yeah, they just pay off the gators. They just say, look, go to find the poor. Go eat them. <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of gator man who's like out in the swamp somewhere that you can eat. Why don't we sweeten the deal? My friend Ben, not Ben Affleck, Ben Franklin can help you out. Um, yeah. And the gators are like, deal. The town is covered in a net. <laughs> They're under the dome. Oh, under the oh dome. Like, yeah, like a dome. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's a sci-fi Money tinge. dome. To what you said about uh, the, the whiplash and sort of the right turn. And I, I think, you know, films, you know, we're, we've actually gotten used to that in some ways when we'd watch certain... Um, you know, I mean, Tarantino did it back in the day, but you know, we get we, we had these sort of right turns where all of a sudden it's now a different kind of film. But I think I was like you, like my expectation is Adrian Lyon. He's known for sort of these marital psychological warfare films, where it's really about sort of these couples who are um, really in dysfunction, and then maybe they either something breaks or something heals. And in the middle of the yeah. film, once we get into this area where like, oh, it's now he is a killer and we have to see what the body count is. And it basically, will he be stopped or will he be, you know, will he <laughs> succeed? What is her view of it? Will she leave him? Um, it, it, it did become a whole different film and it became kind of humorous. I thought. Kind of? Kind of? <laughs> well, not, not, it almost like they were intentionally Ridiculous. trying to be funny when they got into the killing because he he kills uh, Flint, you know, Fred Flintstone's neighbor, the, the <laughs> and Mark Rock, <laughs> right? And he, but, <laughs> he throws a rock at him, which I thought was kind of funny, and because the, the guy's like, "What the fuck?" and he's That's bleeding right, profusely. Yeah. I did find that kind of like Coen Brothers humor, and then. He, I don't know how he, he, he throws him down a hill and then he buries in him like three inches of water. Hey, Finn well, Rick Rick Watt Watt got rocked. It was anything but <laughs> deep water. It was, it was the opposite of deep water. It was shallow water. That's what, that's what Ty was trying to tell us yeah. all along. <laughs> <laughs> that's the irony of the title. It's not actually deep water. It's actually very shallow water. It's, it's waiting water. <laughs> Another question, like, I, I had that question, like, their sexual animosity was ramping up between the husband and wife. But it also seemed like his sloppiness was ramping up. They they portray him as this super intelligent guy. The <laughs> first, as far as we know, the first murder, he got clean Scott away free. The second murder in the pool, they had the cops over, and he's like, yeah, I don't know. And he's super cool about it. <laughs> totally gets away with it. The third murder, he's like, I'm going to keep your wallet. I'm going to just murder you out in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to barely get rid of your body by putting <laughs> it in shallow water it's like he's becoming an unhinged murderer like he's this perfect murdering machine and then he's like you know what i'm just gonna become sloppy now and see if i can get caught and then that friend mm. the author friend just happens to be there yes. what, what is going on here like i was like wait a minute so and the author friend at this point wasn't his friend anymore like he had made it very clear that he was working with Ana de Armas to hire a private investigator to research Ben Affleck and see if he could commit this murder in the pool and um, possibly the one before that. And so they're not friends. So why in the world does this guy show up like at the right time, right when Ben Affleck is like trying to like hide Finn Rick Rock's 
<laughs> oh, yeah, it wasn't like body. nearby. It was it was like a hike. It was like on a country road. Like it was yeah. like a hidden spot up in near this quarry. Right. It wasn't like he just happened to pop into him at the park. It was like no, they, they were in the middle of nowhere. Like this was an effort to get out there. Yeah, they had shown. But guys, he found they... the scarf. He found the scarf. Okay, he found the <laughs> scarf. Why? Why? He... <laughs> I can, speaking of writer Tracy Lutz's character, I just wanted to go back quickly to uh, the scene prior when we see him. Ben Affleck jumps into the basically the backyard of uh, Tracy Lutz's home where they're having dinner. So it's Tracy Lutz, his younger wife, and their daughter, and he confronts the family. It confronts Don. Don is the character's name. I wrote this down. So he confronts Don, the writer, uh, because he thinks he's uh, uh, joined together with Ben Affleck's wife to uh, hire a PI. Right. But the funny part to me is the wife immediately turns against her husband and joins Team Affleck. Like a line is literally like, yeah. what the fuck, Don? What were you thinking? <laughs> yeah. in, front again, the, the daughter in front of the teenage right daughter. The and they're telling the teenage daughter, get inside. Get inside. Goldie, you go inside. Goldie, Goldie is the daughter's name. I wrote that down because it's just one of the funniest things you can scream. Get in the house, Goldie. <laughs> Why are these children named after like 40s screen queens? Like I don't understand. Goldie and Trixie Galore. You know, like it's like <laughs> But then one of the exactly, it's so funny. But then one of the smoking gun uh pieces of evidence Affleck has, so he knows that Tracy Letts is working with his wife, is that he found uh a, a statement or something that yeah. says that uh Donna Onodarmus owed like seven hundred and forty seven dollars to this person. And Affleck assumes that he must have, uh, she must have split it in half with Tracy yes. Letts because that amount of money doesn't make sense. Well, if you double seven hundred forty-seven dollars, it's still a weird amount of money. Yeah, <laughs> how do you I, I, how do you jump to any math. conclusion that that's suspicious? It, it's not like it's fifteen hundred dollars. It, it's it just would have been like, dude, the guy costs seven hundred and ten dollars a day, but there's tax, so it's seven forty-seven <laughs> twenty-eight cents. So it's an right. hourly. He, he doesn't pro rate so it's, yes. it's, yeah that's a really yeah. good point that's a very good point like how yeah, would he know so he's just like the most brilliant snail scientist in the world i guess yeah it just felt like a curb scene like there are a few scenes that felt like a scene from curb like a dramatic version of curb i mean just, <laughs> there was a scene earlier that i wrote down that happened a bit earlier where uh, Anna Darmus finds out that Ben told this really funny dark joke that he had murdered her friend, right? And he's, she's furious at him, and she's furious at him while she's brushing her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> So she's got so like she's got foam. Like, she's got like thumbs, like she's got like a little cute, got like foam goatee, and she's like brushing her teeth, and she's screaming at him. And at one point, she like says something dramatic, and then there's a beat, and she just like wipes her mouth. It's so <laughs> funny. But ultimately, that scene is her yelling at her husband for telling an inappropriate joke at a party, him apologizing, and then them settle. She tells him. He has to apologize to the friend at dinner in which she invited the friend, which is like the most curb setup in the world. <laughs> Larry <laughs> says true. something inappropriate, and then he has to apologize at a dinner. At a dinner. It's you know, this could so have been good. a great comedy or just an average thriller. I yeah. mean, it's a little bit of both. I really think that we are, you know, we we would be remiss for not mentioning the great sight gag of Ben Affleck chasing down Tracy Letts oh in the yes. forest, like on uh, his bicycle. Okay. And, his, you know, Don is like, oh, you're going to get me on your bike? Oh, you're going to get me? <laughs> it was just such a weird thing, a weird moment. And then he actually does. And <laughs> instead of actually doing anything, Ben Affleck takes a shortcut on his bike through the forest. I, I'm assuming to cut him off. But he yeah. slips and falls and falls in front of the car, causing Don to swerve and then immediately fall <laughs> off of a cliff. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's where are we? Cat. Well, no, he would have fallen anyway because the reason he was he was fleeing was because he, when, again, when he comes upon Ben Affleck, just randomly comes upon him, like after a, you know, a 10 mile drive in the forest, he finds him poking this body in three feet of water and it's like, oh shit. <laughs> and that's when he, he flees. But he's all excited because he's he's like, I've got my book. I mean, he's all like, I can't wait to His stick book. it to my wife who, who said <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. I know, that's and as he's, opposed to, yeah, this guy just murders yeah, he's all excited because he's got a story and he's fumbling with his phone and that and of course he's veering wildly out of control because he's he's trying to 
I think he's trying to take a text. selfie or text. No, he's texting his wife saying, I told you so, or right. I knew it, or something like that. So I think it was almost I was right. I was right, is what he's trying to send. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, damn, autocorrect. <laughs> yeah. It really it, felt like. <laughs> it was getting comedic, especially with Affleck falling in front of him and then him going off the cliff. Where did the cliff come from? Well, I know, they're in the swamp, right? I mean, well, they're, they're not in the swamp. They're in the forest. What part of Louisiana are we in? Yeah, well, do they have these giant quarries <laughs> with these huge lakes just in the middle of, of swampland? It, but there are no alligators. There's like nothing. <laughs> no alligators, no cranes. Climate like, change. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, so that's his that's his gimme where he's like, oh, good, like I, I won because yes. <laughs> this guy just drives himself off a cliff and he's dead now. And you know, there's no reason to worry that somebody would be like, how did he die? What was he texting? <laughs> right? But Why then, does he have this scarf? But then we're yeah. supposed to get yes. we're supposed to get this big sort of like jagged edge basic instinct reveal where Ana de Armas Melinda finds uh, her friend's wallet in the snail tank and so it's like oh my gosh she's gonna confront him and they end the film with basically the beginning where he rides in on his bike with his little shorts it's the same scene now we're seeing where that scene fits and she's like turned on she's like oh it's a different scene but but she no because she's sitting it is the same scene she's like what are you looking at and she's like nothing and it's like you know how i know because he was wearing tiny shorts the first time this time he's wearing full clothes oh i thought it was the same scene and and he takes off his pants (laughs) yeah they're mirrored i don't know why because he has like the same skivvies on so but she is so so he's coming back from the first murder in the open of the film Uh, maybe and she's and she's like this turns me on and how do I get him to murder more people? Right? <laughs> bring him up, more. Bring, up bring him sequel. more. Yeah, bring him more yeah. prey. That's what she does. She she goes out and harvests everyone for him. For his this film <laughs> seemed like it was supposed to be a character study, and we didn't study anything because it was like a, a a very like a very bad class because it we didn't get any insight into how she she was she was seemed very shallow and petulant yet she was working really hard to show that she was uh, upset and i just i need friends and if you let me have my friend which he does but then you get mad because i have sex with my friend and then but we don't really get any develop for her and then we don't get any development for him did he have some sort of childhood trauma or why is he you know he's a genius and he got to retire early for making some uh some sort of Drones. software for the military, but Drones. we don't really get, there's no why, no why well, about either character. Yeah, like how did they meet and what did they have in common and like where is she from <laughs> and what is he, like was he always like this? Was he always weird? Was she like cheating on someone else with did him? Did she stumble like, into the Sasquatch <laughs> village and he, they fell in love? <laughs> did this child come from either of them? <laughs> I mean, they tried to work it out like, it, like she did. This little girl listening to Leo Sayer over the, uh, <laughs> singing along with to that, oh, you make me feel like dancing over the credits. Slowly trying to drive her mom oh, crazy right. with old McDonald. And she didn't care that her dad killed someone. She was like, I think you did. And you're just not telling me the truth. Like, she looked like she was a little psycho. And she was like, I can't wait to start killing like daddy. Yeah, like, the details. Well, she, she, had her, she had her first sip of Chardonnay. So she felt like she could just That's be honest. Right. You know? Very good Boy, point. I, I, this is such a flattering portrayal of, of affluent couples in Louisiana. I'm- yeah. <laughs> well, here's my question. Here's my question. As the sole representative of women who are not married... In this, <laughs> in this podcast <laughs> of people who are not married, this really makes marriage look like trash. Like it really makes it look like it's a lot of fucking work and people are mad and they hate each other and they need an open marriage. They can't get divorced. That's Adrian Line. I'd love to know, you know, I'm sure he's been interviewed as to why he hates marriage so much. <laughs> like marriage is a trap. The other thing is trash people have trash marriages. Yeah, so every episode of this, every every bit of this movie is trash people interacting with each other and bringing other yeah. people into their trash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I just thought that it hit all the weird beats, like the weird, this is a sexy yes. thriller, like saying stuff like, you know, like, do you not want me to have sex with him? Like, do you, do you want to sleep with me? Do I look affable? Do I, you know, and there's like all these weird pointed questions, like you can never make me, you like, <laughs> this is, this is explicit but you know what i mean like remember he had to sleep in a separate room and like you know he right. she, he came in and was maybe a little horny and she's like no and then 
something happened at one of their gatherings and she came home drunk and she did one. He's like, no, you're drunk. And then what was the reason, the, the twisted, perverted reason that they finally did have some sort of, uh, uh, you know, rep- piano you know. man was murdered. I, I, I forget. Yeah, yeah, I, it was, I think it was that right. it was like she was turned on yeah, by the, yeah. I don't know. It was weird. No, that wasn't when piano man was murdered. When yeah. piano man was murdered, she was like, like telling him like to, to oh, go to away and away. I, yeah, I hate yeah. you and all that stuff. You killed him. Ah, she started hitting him in the car and stuff. But I mean, I just want to, I want to be in a relationship where I can like sit sexily on the stairs and accuse somebody of like, (laughs) did it turn you on to see me having sex with him? Like you could never satisfy me. And then like (laughs) sipping, sipping like menacingly from like a whiskey glass. And I'm like, (laughs) like, why don't you go sleep on the couch? If you knew, if you were a real man. (laughs) I will say that the modern era of technology has ruined um, car arguments because with, with for rich people because she's sitting there beating them up and in, and in a bygone era it would be like you know they almost swerve into oncoming traffic but they're in like a you know an auto driving Tesla so that suspense is kind of not there. <laughs> That's true. I well, thought about that too. I was like, so he could just put this on auto. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Come at me all you want, baby. This car is taking us home safe. Yeah, these people don't do it. For an erotic thriller, there really wasn't that much erotic or thrilling about it. <laughs> well, you got to see her boobs once, and then like, yeah. like she kept showing her back to men. Like, I mean, she kept taking her top down, and you just see her back. Like yeah. she was showing mm-hmm. boyfriends her back. She was showing Ben Affleck her back. She was showing the, she babysitter, the babysitter her sitter. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were like, oh, it's just her culture. It's just her culture. And I'm like, what culture? <laughs> Where is she from? Miami? Like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> She's from a new Yeah, she colony. rails on America. She rails on America being too uptight for not being able to show the babysitter her back. <laughs> that would be really funny if it turned out after all those like america this is the first american boyfriend you know all that stuff and she's actually from like atlanta (laughs) (laughs) she's french canadian right (laughs) well uh should we rate this thing let's well we have a three-tiered rating scale here at cinema craptaculous the top is well cinema craptaculous and in this case i am deeply in love with this sexy sexy movie sexy the second tier is just craptaculous uh it's something to watch on a sunday afternoon and in this case it's a floater (laughs) i don't know what that i i don't understand when i saw that i was like what does this mean (laughs) it's deep water and you're like a body floating well on top. it's also something else <laughs> oh yes <laughs> and, and that would be the next one which is utter crap or the audience is in deep shit <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'll go first i definitely Three. thought this was uh, an utter crap the audience is in deep shit i mean in, meaning why did i sacrifice two hours of my <laughs> life to this <laughs> comedy farce <laughs> to this because of Kai, we blame Ty. remember <laughs> yeah, it was all Ty's fault. I mean, well, bring the hate. You, bring the hate. Yeah, Ty, you and John voluntarily walked into this mess, and Dave and I were like just dragged in. Um, we were the ones you were trying to hold underwater. <laughs> <laughs> we were the boyfriends. Yeah, we were the boyfriends. <laughs> I got Finn wit rocked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I just thought that it was not like I said, it was almost like a like a paint by numbers. Ben Affleck was completely dead. Like he was like as as dead as the corpse that was floating in the water with no alligators about. Um, and I just I could not understand the characters. I didn't care for the characters. I thought that sexy wife TM was just doing that. And like it was just tonally all over the place. I didn't I didn't oh. dig it. Mm-mm. Nope. Um, I actually, I'm going to give it, it's a floater, craptacular, because I do think it may be worthwhile to watch on a Sunday afternoon. The first half, I was into it. And then the second half is so, what the fuck is going on here? That it might be worthwhile to watch. Um, it does kind of drag on a little bit. Ben Affleck is just a walking sourpuss in the whole movie. Uh, nothing quite makes sense. And I think that's part of my attraction to it. I understand why Ty recommended it. Uh, but I remember the first time I showed up on Hulu 
And I looked at it and it was like Ben Affleck. Okay. Uh, maybe erotic thriller. And I was, I, I, I was out. I was like, <laughs> I was like no pass. Um, and no, I probably would never have watched it if it wasn't uh, for Ty's recommendation. So, uh, but yeah, I, I'd say on a Sunday afternoon, if you have a hangover and just want like a quiet erotic thriller, this, this will do pig. This will do. <laughs> uh, Ty, you want to go ahead? Sure. What was your top tier named again? Uh, I am deeply in love with this sexy, sexy movie. Or oh, I love it, baby. I love <laughs> it. Oh, no. I just, I love thinking about choices, like choices in art. And I know making things is hard and making anything is a miracle. But every choice was wrong. <laughs> and I felt... Like, I mean, this is the most, this is the most oft used example, but like, I don't know if I've seen a movie make so many atypical to human behavior choices since the room. I mean, genuinely tracking yes. anyone's like, and tracking any rational behavior was impossible. And for that reason, I kind of loved it. It's a bad movie that I, that I kind of love. And to your point, Dave, the first, hour, well, actually, maybe this is the opposite of your point. The first hour I thought was repetitive and kind of boring. And the last hour was extremely fun <laughs> and totally nonsensical. I laughed out loud so many times. Uh, if if you enjoy irony whatsoever, I feel like this is a huge recommend. And if you don't, this is going to be a waste of time. <laughs> you know what? I I think that there there can't be middle ground on this because the way you guys have offered up your reviews, I think it has to be either uh, I am deeply in love with this sexy, sexy movie or the audience is in deep shit. Because I think to go with it's just a floater, I think... Um, kind of annihilates Ty's response and Stephanie's response. I think it's got to be a very divisive film. So, uh, but uh, I, I'm... It's the last Jedi of And the thing is, is I can <laughs> absolutely go down um, Ty's line of thought in my assessment, because I agree with that. But I think I will give it the utter crap, the audience is in deep shit, only because I think <laughs> that it is misleading. It, as Dave said so eloquently, is neither erotic nor it's a thriller. <laughs> <laughs> because it it, it 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 has its erotic uh, attempts, but they're not very sexy. Ben Affleck is just too big and awkward in so many scenes, and we don't see her with the other guys who actually are kind of attractive. So I, I don't there's I don't know where the sexy comes. And then it's not a thriller because to Dave and Ty's point, it gets so kind of off the rails into absurdia. <laughs> <laughs> that it, it's not a, it, there's nothing thrilling um maybe if you're into his ben affleck's if, since his, the cards are shown to the audience at the midpoint then it becomes like are you rooting for him to succeed or rooting for him to get caught that might be thrilling but i didn't find it thrilling and i did find those moments where i was giggling well ty thanks for joining us on this cinema craptaculous journey what are, where can people find you what like if they wanted to follow you on the socials what would i do sure i'm only on instagram so look for ty freer baby which is my name, Ty Freer, with the word baby at the end. It's not stupid <laughs> at all. <laughs> is, there, is there a story behind that, or is it just... Uh, well, before I was just Ty dot Freer, and I didn't like having the dot there. Somebody else squatted Ty Freer, and I just think, oh. I like adding baby to things. You know, like, hey, what's up, baby? <laughs> you know, it's very stupid and very delightful to me. So it felt like a natural thing to make your handle. <laughs> Ty, what are you uh, what are you working on these days? Anything you can talk about in the world of Ty Freer Baby? I don't think I'm a, I'm on a show now, but I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it. That boring Hollywood stuff. So maybe well, in a just couple because years. Because you're on the on Happy Days, the Next Generation doesn't mean you have to keep it all secret. Secret. Dark. It's very erotic. It's more erotic this <laughs> movie by far. There's a lot of sex, and I mean a lot of sex. It makes euphoria. It makes euphoria look like I don't know TGIF or some. Shit. What he wants it's... to tell us is that um, Cinemax is actually coming back, and Ty is spearheading <laughs> yeah. their flagship production. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm the head. I'm the head of uh, New Cinemax, is what they're calling it. Uh, they 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 learned about my uh, my my affinity towards their softcore uh, in the <laughs> mid '90s. Um, uh, uh, you know, I man, that would be a really fun. It would be great if those shows had an after show. By the way, <laughs> I, <laughs> Ty, I'd like to get. I, I think we need to get you back on a film that we make you watch. Let's do it. I can't wait. The worst, the worse, the better for me. Just let's not let's not wait two and a half years to the next one. Well, thanks for joining us on the Cinema Craftaculous journey. This is Dave, and ever present with me are is John. 
Yeah, Steph had to jump off early because she has a, a job. She has to work. <laughs> And remember, a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one. It's just a lot easier to make fun of. Is that it? Is that how we end? Is there one more line? B- you could add baby to the end. <laughs> oh, remember, a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one. It's just a lot easier to make fun of, baby. See, wasn't that more fun? Thank you for listening to another episode of Cinema Craptaculous. If you'd like to hear all our other episodes, including our other shows like B-Sides, The Expanded Universe, and Terror Tunnel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Go to Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And while you're there, rate us. Give us a good review, we hope. It helps get the Craptaculous word out. And be sure to follow us on social media, at Craptaculous on Instagram and Twitter. We're also on Facebook. And you can find more content at cinemacraptaculous.com. Craptaculous.com.